Okay, so we now have a grasp of JavaScript and how it works. Um, if you're not sure, feel free to copy this uh, link into your own HTML or just use the example that comes with this um, session. Um, jQuery is a nice, simple library for us to use, and that's why we've used it. Okay, so let's just take a look at our example back in our browser. So here it is, and you can see that if I click on my mouse up, I get a JavaScript alert. And if I click on these, they're hidden. And if I refresh the page, it gets back to normal again. Okay, so really, what does this have to do with coding in live code? This seems like a bit of a departure. Well, if we want to be able to interact with the browser um, and make the browser feel like it's part of our application, then we have to be able to communicate to and from the browser. And one of the great new features that comes with Live Code 6.7, and in particular the CEF browser, is the ability to register uh, Live Code handlers so that JavaScript can call them. So let's take a quick look again at our documentation. If we go to JavaScript integration, you can see here there's um, there's two new handlers, add JavaScript handler and uh, remove JavaScript handler. And then there's a little example of how we go about calling um, our JavaScript. So let's take a quick look at the uh, create code now in my stack. And you'll notice that I've got, after I've created my browser and I've set its area as we had before, I've added one extra line. And it's just add JavaScript handler, my browser ID, and the parameter related clicked. You'll notice down here I also have um, related clicked, and it's just a handler. Um, and that's it. That's all I've added. But by doing so, when you call this, you effectively create a live code object, JavaScript object which has all of your handlers um, right there ready for you to call. So instead of calling alert, what I can do is I can call now call live code related clicked because I've registered it. You can see I've registered it just here, related clicked. And it is going to pass back to me um, the same HTML. So the, the item just here it's going to pass back that text, which allows us then, I guess, to navigate to uh, the item in our documentation or allows us to do anything that we like to do. But rather than just getting one parameter, you'll see I'm passing one parameter, I get two. And the first one is always the browser instance. So if I have three or four different browsers on the screen, um, then it, I know which object it's related to. So let's just test that out. First of all, I need to save this because I've uncommented that. And so in here, I need to refresh. Let's try this. OK. Let's just create the browser true, because of course, we haven't run this code here. So now it has been run. And now you can see that as I click, that message is coming back to live code. This isn't part of the browser. This is just my UI. And I'm adding the text I get. What's even cooler is if I just put a breakpoint in and I click on the browser object, it triggers a breakpoint as normal. You see the browser instance, you see the related text, and you can see I'm just putting it into the field. Okay, so to extend that out and just help us to grasp this, let's add another one. So rev browser add JavaScript handler will do nice browser ID. And this time we'll do um, example hidden. And so we need to create an example hidden handler. And I'm just going to copy this because it's quick. And we'll ask for the example number. And then we're just going to answer p example number. OK, so we've added the live code side. Now how do we add the JavaScript side? Let's go back here. And rather than calling hide example, what I'm going to do is use the live code object again to notify my application that a JavaScript event has happened, so live code. And if we remember this time, 
um, we're calling the function example hidden. So we'll go example hidden. And this time, rather than uh, passing the text, I'm going to get the ID. So in order to do that, I can go dot attribute and ID. Okay. So let's run that quickly. I've saved that. I'm going to create my browser object instance again. This time I'm going to click hide and I get a pop-up example one. Brilliant. Now a little additional thing to show you, which I don't know if I explained particularly well earlier, was that I can define custom information here. So let's say I'm going to define um, true info, or let's call it hidden info. Okay. And uh, this example is really funny. I'm going to copy this down to all of the other ones as well so that we have that. And I'll go, this example is really scary. This example is really tired. This example is really old. Okay. So now, rather than getting the ID, I could just pass back the hidden info. And so when I refresh it, let's create it all over again. And this time, you can see that I get far more information. So hopefully that goes some way to helping you grasp how you go about um, talking um, to your browser, and in particular, allowing your browser to call back information and pass back information. So rather than you trying to watch how the source is changing, you're essentially defining your own callbacks and you're able to call them. Um, so you can use the browser to display a really rich and beautiful layout and even make it interactive, um, but then ultimately just uh, call live code functions and do everything that you want to in your application behind the scenes. Okay, so the last part um, of this puzzle, if you like, is we need to work out how to communicate um, from live code to the browser. So in other words, we've managed to work out that when we click on elements in the browser, we can communicate back to live code by using this registering of handlers. And we can get the browser to call um, some of our own um, handlers. Now, how do we do it the other way around? How do we get live code to trigger functions directly in our JavaScript? Well, this one's even simpler. And so I've created a really simple example. What we're going to try and do is hide this first line. So I've created the hide example button. And you'll see my script. I'm just calling a uh, handler hide example. And I'm passing the name of, if you remember, the ID of the object. So we're going to try and hide this first one, which happens to correlate to this one here. OK, so in our stack script, we have our hide example. And I could have done this in one line, but I'm doing it in three just to kind of help you guys see what the script is like. Now, in order to hide an example, we have a function in our JavaScript. It's called hide example, and it takes the ID of the object you want to hide, and then it does an actual hide. So really, we just need to call this function. So you'll notice in my script, all I'm doing is I'm building a line of script that is going to do exactly that. Let's get the debugger going. And if I hover over T script, you can see it's just hide example, and then I'm passing example one. So let's take the breakpoint out and let's run it. And you can see I hid the example, which is great. If I refresh the page and do it again, hid, hit it, refresh. So we've got communication in both directions. Let's just flesh this out to um, make sure that we um, fully understand it. Let's do a show example so that we can show it again. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to show. So I've just copied the script. I've changed it to show example. Next, I'm going to create another button. And this one, I'm going to call show example. And um, I will go into the script of show example, and I will change it to show example. OK, great. So we've got everything on our side. 
And if we run this, well, let's hide first. If we run it, nothing will happen. It'll get to here, and it'll say there was an error. Something went wrong. Now, the reason for that, of course, is that we haven't implemented the function on our JavaScript side. So let's add the function, show example. And this time, I'm going to put show in there. And now, if I refresh, I go hide example, show example, hide example, show example, hide example, show example. OK, so uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how you would go about um, implementing uh, bi-directional communication between the browser and live code.